Another day, another extradition attempt. Just days after South Africa failed to extradite the Guptas, there's another extradition to deal with. A high-level delegation in Tanzania is trying to bring back a Tabo Besta and Nandipama Gudumana into the country. Now, they were arrested in that country along with a Mozambican national. The pair were on the run since news of his prison escape service, uh, surfaced. Let's find out what the extradition process is from immigration attorney Gary Eisenberg. A very good morning to you, Gary, and thank you for joining us this morning. Now, there's been a distinction that's been made over the last few days between um, an extradition and the deportation of Tabo Besta. And maybe if you could uh, tell us why that distinction is important, uh, that he's being uh, deported back into the country rather than being extradited. Uh, Minister Lamola did his best uh, a day or two ago to describe the difference. And he said that extradition is based on um, an attempt to get an individual back into South Africa to face charges, criminal charges, in a South African court. Uh, but once the person has already been convicted and sentenced, it's no longer an extradition. It's a deportation from the foreign country. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, if we speak about Malawi in the case of uh, uh, Prophet uh, Shepherd Bushiri, or in the case of Tanzania, with Mr. Besta, we're talking about the South African Development Community, the SADC protocol and extradition. And the protocol um, indicates in very clear English language that even if the person has already been convicted and sentenced, uh, the person would be subject to extradition, uh, not uh, necessarily deportation. Once the extradition process begins, even in the case of Mr. Besta, uh, who escaped prison, so he's a fugitive from justice found in Arusha by the police authorities in Tanzania. Um, if, the, if the extradition process has begun, and it could begin with what's called a provisional arrest, if the authorities believe he's going to escape, even before the extradition, the formal extradition bundle has been delivered through diplomatic channels, an arrest warrant can be issued in terms uh, of the protocol and the person would be found and arrested and incarcerated awaiting the extradition process to unfold. With regard to Mr. Besta, he was arrested, as far as I understand, on Friday, a few days ago. The extradition process has not begun. No provisional arrest warrant has been issued, as far as I know. He has been apprehended by the Tanzanian police without uh, having cleared immigration, formal immigration procedures at the border. In other words, our police minister has already commented that he has been found with multiple passports and none of those passports have, have been cleared for uh, entry into Tanzania. So before the extradition process begins and he has been found by the local police to be an illegal foreigner, as it seems Mr. Bester has, no extradition process has begun and he is clearly subject to deportation from the country. So let's talk about uh, that uh, deportation that he's subject to. We do understand that we've got a delegation of various law enforcement authorities that are now in the country trying to get him back. What kind of conversation would they be having and uh, what does it take to get him back and what time frame um, are we looking at in this instance, Gary? We're not looking necessarily at a lot of drama. We're looking at really police authorities working together having a cup of coffee, perhaps a lunch or a dinner, talking about arrangements when the South African uh, prosecutorial or police authorities can take control physically of Mr. Besta and his accomplices and escort them on a plane back to South Africa. And it's just this, in terms of Tanzanian ordinary deportation procedures as they exist in most countries, including South Africa, and it's not about extradition. It would appear that the extradition process has not yet begun at all because that's a very formalistic, time-consuming process. And all the South African authorities want to do is get him back into South Africa physically, have him handcuffed and chained, and put him back into prison. And that's how it's going to ensue as far as I understand. 
Yeah, no, it's very interesting developments indeed. Gary, I want to weigh in on another issue that we've been witnessing as a country, that being of the Guptas, their, um, their extradition uh, being denied by the UAE uh, last week at some point, and obviously efforts are being made to change that decision. Um, perhaps just give us a broad sense of what exactly that means when one country says, actually, we won't be engaging in the extradition of these people to face a law. Or, um, to face the law in the country and what appeals can be made in this regard? With regard to the Guptas in particular, there's a, there's a background story here. Uh, it has taken years for the South African prosecutorial authorities to come to terms with its counterparts in the UAE. There seem to have been a breakdown of diplomacy. Uh, a breakdown in cooperation between the authorities. And now we hear for the first time that the discharge of the Guptas in a UAE court from the extradition inquiry uh, was only communicated to the South African government a month or two later, which is unheard of. Uh, South Africa has always claimed its very close working relationship with the UAE authorities, but bump after bump in the road confronted the South African government with translations of the extradition documents, uh, a lack of communication, a lack of cooperation, a lack of working together at, at, at all levels. And this has come to haunt the process leading to uh, their discharge on some or other defense in terms of which they were very successful. And I believe it was the charge sheet that was amended. Uh, it doesn't really matter at this stage. I don't believe the South African authorities are going to be successful because cooperation seems to have been broken down. And when that happens, uh, especially between South Africa and the UAE, where the, where the systems are altogether different, cooperation means everything. And when that break, breaks down, nothing will occur. And that's my view. As a last thought from you, Gary, and uh, forgive me if this may sound like a silly question, but in both cases, uh, both parties, Tabo Besta and the Guptas, have cases to answer. Tabo Besta for being illegally in Tanzania and the Guptas for um, other uh, crime activities that would have occurred outside of South Africa. Could their representation, their legal representation, argue that they be um, in the court systems in the respective countries? countries that they're currently in, or would they have to face the law back in South Africa? Um, in Tanzania, for example, where Tabo Besta was there illegally, could that country argue that we want him to face the law for him being an illegal um, here, rather than bring him back to South Africa? Is that a thing, or is it not? Well, that really depends on the domestic laws and how they operate in Tanzania, and I'm no expert in Tanzanian domestic law. But in, in making a comparison with the Guptas, remember the Guptas were apprehended in the UAE subject to an arrest warrant uh, issued by the South African prosecutorial authorities to face charges uh, of crimes in South Africa. Mm. They were not convicted. They, they, were not, uh, they were not sentenced yet. And therefore... Um, they were discharged from the extradition inquiry the way it would be in South Africa in a mirror image of what happened there. With regard to Bester, Bester was convicted. Uh, he was sentenced and he escaped from the correctional facilities in South Africa. So there's nothing really to prove. Uh, but once the extradition process begins, if this is a case where South Africa wishes to apply for his extradition, let's say if Tanzania refuses to deport him for some other reason, um, then he's protected by that extradition process mm. until the extradition inquiry has been concluded. So it's really the difference lies in whether or not the extradition process has begun. In the best of case, it has not yet begun. Mm. Very interesting insights uh, this morning. Thank you very much uh, to uh, Specialist Immigration Attorney uh, Gary Eisenberg joining us uh, this morning. And